What's going on? Today we will be carrying on with Linux privilege escalation. So recently we have uh, gone through task 1, all the, the last 10 tasks. In this video we're going to go over task 11, 12 and 13 which cover the exploitation or the privilege escalation through uh, looking for suit bit executables and shared, and shared object injection as well. So let's start with the first one. So here we, we will look for, as I said earlier, the executables are binaries that have the suit bit set or SGID. So basically it is kind of, uh, you have to execute some sort of find command to um, list the binaries. So basically let me grab my notes and from here let's look over the command. So let's try this one. So here we haven't found anything. Let's start the next one. In this command, we're adding the, uh, the, uh, the functionality or the capability of looking for the SGID. So basically here we put permissions, dash U plus S, and here dash G plus S for SGIDs. And then we list the files. All right, let's see. So we got a handful of binaries. Now the binary that we will be looking at this scenario is this one, xeem4843. So as you can see, it has the suit bit set. And um, technically it means we can execute that binary as the owner. So what happens when we execute that binary? Let's try it out. So XSIM is a mail transfer agent. We get to in the intro uh, of, of this program. So basically, you know, XSIM is a mail transfer agent. Um, so nothing happened. So as you can see, we have the version attached to the name of the program. So if we try to look for the exploits available for that version, we see in the exploit database there is one, four, eight, four, three, and this is the code, so basically you can write files as root or force a peerl module to load by manipulating the peerl environments and running xtheme with the peerl startup argument dash ps. This is how they exploit the vulnerability actually. Um, so basically, let's grab this here. Right, so if you go to home, you just have to download the exploit now the exploit has been downloaded for you at this directory so as you can as you can see you can just go over and go ahead and ex uh, list the contents of that exploit so it means if we execute this one we're gonna get a shell Let's try to execute this exploit. ID root. So this task is fairly easy and straightforward. You just have to find an exploit for a vulnerable binary. Let's exit and move on to the next one. So the next one is about uh, using shared object injection technique. So if we clear and again look for the binaries for the suit bit set and SGID, let's see what do we have here. So we have this one, suit su. So suit su also has the suit bit set. Now, if we try to execute this binary, see there's a progress bar and that's it, done. Now, one of the ways. One of the ways to escalate privileges is to check if the binary is making system calls to a shared object. All right. Now, shared objects are files that end with the extension .so, like this one. So if the executable is trying to load a shared object, and whether it whether it is able to find that shared object or not, we can create a shared object with the same name and let the binary load our shared object. 
That's why it's called shared object injection. So to find out the system calls the binary is making, we can use a command called strace. So strace define the path. I think it's better if I just copy that. All right. Oh no! 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 Then we grab dash i e. So here we're looking for um, open access or no such file strings in the file. So trace. What would trace do here? It would just. Uh, it is just a troubleshooting tool, right? So it would displays and records all of the system calls the so and so is making. But we are not interested in seeing all of the output. That's why we're using grep uh, to find out uh, occurrences where the so and so is trying to access a non existent file, such as shared object. So we try open. So we put open access no such file. So we're looking specifically for this string in the output of trace. Let's see here. So we can see no such file. There are multiple uh, occurrences of no such file directory. So if you go over the files that the tool is trying to access, we see one that ends with the so extension. So in this line, the tool is trying to access a shared object in this directory. All right. Uh, now the thing is, it's not able to find it. So what we can do here, we can just create a shared object with the same name under the same directory, and then we run the tool again. Now when we run the tool again, after creating that file, the tool will be able to uh, just locate the shared object and execute our own shared object, right? Which results in a root shell. So the next step, you guessed that right, we will create a directory under home user called config and then we will load our own shared object. So issue make directory at home user slash config. All right, now we've created a directory. We have now to just create a shared object. Creating a shared object is not hard. Just you have to find a C code, compile it into shared object and you're done. So for you, the author has um, loaded a C code in uh, let's get the in, in the following directory home user tools so that's a C code loaded for you in this directory taking a look at the C code we see it is just uh, you know summoning bash shell so if you compile that C code into a shared object and we place that shared object under that directory, we can then let the tool use our own shared object as I said earlier. So let's compile that GCC dash shared. Specify the output path will be home user config. And then let's take the name of the file. Lastly, we specify the file that we would like to compile, which is a C code. So cd to home user config. Ls, this is our shared object. If we cat the content, let's see. <laughs> it's really a shared object, right? Okay, clear. So our shared object is here right now. The last step is to execute the executable, right? Or execute the binary. So just type user local bin, so it so, and you will get new bash shell. If you type id, you are the root user. That's how shared object on object injection works. Exit. Okay. Now, so, so far we have discussed 
non-exploits for binaries, and also we discussed shared object injection. What about environment variables? So if we again run the same command, all right, suit environment. Let's take a look at this file, what it does. Execute that. So starting a web server, right, already running. Now in this binary, what we can do here, uh, we can try to just poison the environment variable path. In order to be able to poison the environment variable path for this binary, the binary has to call executables or services without defining the absolute path. So how to know if there is an opportunity to exploit the environment variables or the environment variable path for a specific binary? So you have first to define if there is a call to a binary without defining the full path. So you can use trace or you can use strings. So strings that's way faster, right? So upon issuing strings we see the readable strings that we can uh, find in, in this binary. So one of them is this one, servers apache to start, which what actually the uh, binary is doing. It's just uh, getting the apache server started. Now, because the executable or the binary does not define the full path to apache 2, it means it is relying on the environment variables to find the path for apache 2, right? So, if we can poison the environment variable, all right, load our own code, and then change the environment variable path, we can just get sued environment to execute our own version. So, service Apache to start. The first thing is, so what to do now? Shall we create a version of Apache 2, or shall we create service? So we will use service. Since there is no absolute path to service, we're gonna create our own version of service, right? And then let the suit environment execute our own version of service instead of this one. So the first step is to just create a C code that will spawn a bash shell. So for that purpose, the author has also created one for you. You can find it. Uh, or you can, yeah, you can find it in the following path. Just type cat or cd to. So, first thing, they created one C code, cat service. Simple C code to just spawn a bash shell, right? Now, what we can do, we can just compile this one. All right. Let's compile it. So gcc o. Now here we define the name of the output. The name of the output should match the exact name of the service or the yeah the executable you are trying to exploit. So it should be service. Now next we define the path of the code that we are trying to compile. Ls. Now we have the service. So what's next? Next is we just modify the path, the the the, val the value of the environment, the path environment variable. So if now echo path, the current value of the path environment variable is this user local bin user bin at the end of the line. Now what we're gonna do here? We're gonna add our own path, which is home user. I'm going to add this one, all right, to the very start of the, the path environment variable, so that when the executable runs, it will look for the service first in home user instead of user local bin. So type path equal home user path. Now again, again, echo path. See the current value of path, how it has changed. So 
So now we have home user. But it needs a bit of correction here, I guess. I forgot the semicolon here. Yeah. So let's now execute the uh, binary itself. See if we can get shell id roots. So that was it. In the next video, we're going to go over the rest of the tasks. Namely, I'm going to go over abusing shell features 1 and 2, and hopefully. Uh, after that video, we will be able to finish the rest of the tasks and you will be done with Linux privileged escalation. So thank you for watching.